Yeah, so as, as I've touched on before, the, the climb side of things is, is something I'm really passionate about. And I want to achieve, I really want to achieve, not, not, not for my own, um, not for a pat on the back for myself. I just want to achieve it because it's the right thing to do. And if I can make this one change happen, I'd, I'd probably I'd die a happy man. So, yeah, the, the, looking at the climb side, I'm, I'm going to try and explain things as best I can because there are a lot of elements to it and people need to understand. They don't, they don't need to stay away from this topic because it's, I want people to understand that there's bigger things to play and people have got to look beyond, well, he's stolen money, he gets, he gets sentenced. So this is what I'm trying to do. And <clears throat> what, what the scenario we have at the moment is people are going to prison um, for stealing vast quantities of money from relatives and normally their employers when people are in positions of trust. What that means is those people that are in positions of trust are often um, very smart people. So this disorder gambling is affecting anyone now, you know, a police officer, a doctor, a lawyer, anyone. It, it's, that's, that's how serious we are. And to try and break things down a little bit, um, if someone steals a vast sum of money, um, then they've committed a crime. And, and everyone I've spoke to that, that has done that completely understands that and they'll take their punishment. What I want people to realize is there's a lot more going on um, here than meets the eye, because firstly, the case, the cases I'm dealing with, and I'm dealing with someone I'd call CJ. Now CJ came to me in um, like roughly September, October 2019 and told me he'd stolen three million pounds. He was an accountant very smart guy, um, held his hands up to it. So I, I came up with a plan with him, with his blessing, and that was to um, firstly get his uh, subject access material. So get all the material from the companies he gambled with to allow me to study the material to see whether there were clear, well, whether there were clear offences of money laundering and other exploitation offences under LCCPs. So I studied all of, all of his material and obviously there were massive failings from these companies. So the next part of the strategy was to, to write to the companies. The next part of the journey was for CJ to, to write to the companies with my assistants to point out to them, hey, do you think these are do you think I've been exploited and do you think you've committed money laundering offences now CJ at that time didn't mention any sort of any form of criminality not so we did not to interfere with the the actual criminal investigation side and and this was done through my guidance now obviously I knew what the answers were going to be from these companies bearing in mind you're talking about huge sums of money monies stolen monies that he's put into these um, gambling companies notwithstanding the fact he's put a vast amount of his own money into them and lost his own house as well, which we sh really should not forget about. Now, of course, these companies came back and said, no, no, we've done nothing wrong. You know, we've, we've complied with all the rules. And of course, that's the end of the matter, which I predicted would happen. Now, the reason I, the reason I asked uh, CJ to do that was because at that point in time, the gambling companies would be obliged to report those cases to the Gambling Commission. And again, I know they wouldn't have done that. I'll be very surprised if they've done that, right? So that was the next um, aspect of the case for, for assisting CJ. And that was, we're talking probably April of last year now. So the Gambling Commission should know about those cases. They probably didn't. So the next part of, of my assistance with CJ was to make a report and outline publicly in an anonymized format that this was someone I was helping. Again, at that point, the Gambling Commission were tagged into posts and they should know about the case. So that was kind of the end of my um, sort of public dealings with CJ until um, the point he told me he was about to get charged, which was December this, sorry, December, 2019. So, so the next part of the, the, the plan was to let the companies know even though they should know already, to let them know that these cases involve criminality to a high level. 
So I did that with I did that myself via Gamvisory in, in end of November, December. Shortly after that, I told the GC, hey, this guy's case is three million pounds. I think you should be looking into it. He's going to be charged soon, and you've got to make sure that the investigations that you really should have known about when um, I made the report and when the companies were informed, uh, i.e. last May, so May 2020, surely you would have known about it then and, and done your investigations. And the reason I asked them to, to confirm that they, they're doing this was because for someone to appear in court um, for stealing nearly three million pounds, we want to know whether the failings of the companies um, possibly contributed to his offending behavior. And it's important for the judge to have aware, to be aware of that and have all the material that he needs to, to make a rational decision. But perhaps most importantly, in regards of sentencing, the judge needs to know if the Gambling Commission are taking action against companies that failed CJ and whether his victims are going to be paid back the money that they're sitting on, you know, because that is a key aspect of sentencing. Um, and if the judge is not aware of that information, then that will affect sentencing that because there's a, a stated case with Mark Conway who did an appeal last December successfully when he realized his victim was paid back the full amount, he got his sentence reduced. So um, now, so CJ is getting um, sentenced now on the 7th of April and um, he's, he's being very brave despite his turmoil that he's had to suffer since, you know, um, I think for two and a half years he's been on bail now and, and and I've had to try and help him along his journey but he's so brave in the fact that he's going to say he's saying to his defense team I want you to tell the judge to delay my sentence to get fairness um, so the idea is in in light of the fact the gambling commission have completely ignored me and completely ignored the case is for the judge to turn around and say well come on gambling commission what have you done and you better pull your fingers out and tell me what you're doing because I'm a judge and I don't want to be messed around. So I've got a lot, you know, um, there's, a, I guess there's a lot of, I feel a lot of personal pressure um, in relation to this matter. And I, and I, and I helped another, tried to help another guy last year in, in a similar circumstance called Tom Eaton. And some of which, there's some videos I did with Tom before he went to got sentenced that you can check out on Gamvisory's YouTube. And I've also done a, a video with his wife, Sam, to get her side of, of how she's managing things, which is also on the, on the YouTube channel. Um, and the, the Gambling Commission ignored me and Tom, right? And I told them to get the, their investigations done um, before he was sentenced. They ignored me. And what happened was Tom texted me the day of his sentence when he's in court to tell me I've just found out that some secret deals have been made and my victim has been paid back. Now, the judge didn't know about that. Um, and that affected that would have affected his sentence, you know, and he could have got a suspended sentence at the end of the day. And those videos I've been doing with Sam would have had Tom next to her potentially. So basically the gambling commission are negligent. And what really, what's starting to really anger me at the moment is that, um, you know, I, I, I've just put another report out in relation to, to crime and it's on my website and I'll submit it to the, the review and I, in relation just quickly, well, actually, don't worry about that side, but at the bottom of this report, um, I've named some entities that I've sent this report to and um, I'm going to be asking them very directly soon what they've done to help me. Now, if you pick two, two, any two of the people I've named, the organisations I've named on the bottom of my report, they would have the impact, a lot more clout than me to, to get this matter into the public arena. So I'm going to be asking every single one of them, minus one who has actually helped, what have you done? Why are you ignoring it? Because, you know, it's great. Let's let, let's um you know let's talk about the things that that are they're in flavour like football index and and advertising great great stuff. What about the guy that's going to court and, and not getting a fair trial next week? Why is no one talking about that? So 
yeah, I'm, I'm losing patience with with a lot of organisations and and prominent people that could be helping and are not. And as I say, I'll be asking them very directly why why they think it's okay to ignore this, because as I say, I think what that will do is. Um, I think that would take a bit of pressure off me because when Tom did get his sentence and when the debacle happened with him getting ignored by the gambling commission and, and everyone else really, I took that really, you know, that affected me, really affected me. And, and, and I had a dark weekend and I was, I was very, very angry with the gambling commission as well. Um, so this time I'm not going to let that happen. If, if, if CJ doesn't get the result he wants, um, you know, he's going to appeal. I'm going to make sure of that. I'm going to help him. But I'm not going to take it personally this time. And I'm going to offload a bit of that pressure on to, to, to the other people I've named um, to ask them why they haven't helped. It is a difficult, it is difficult for people to understand. And I hope I've tried to explain it um, so people can understand it. And the other aspect, which is a huge aspect and, 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 and people that, if people want to learn a little bit more about it, please go, go and see the videos of Tom and, and, and his wife about the Proceeds of Crime Act, POCA it's called. So Proceeds of Crime Act um, hearing is basically taking place with Tom um, soon and it takes place routinely with disordered gamblers. And it, this is com it's, it's a complete outrage because what we have is situations where secret deals are made that the judge doesn't even know about and you even have public deals that are made where the victim gets paid back. Yet, yet these poor people then have to go back and have this pocket hearing, which if, which potentially um, either cripples them financially or extends their, their sentences. And you've got to ask yourself, why, why, why is there a pocket hearing against someone who's destitute, has got debts, and you know they haven't brought a, a fancy car or a boat out of their gambling? It's all gone. They haven't, they haven't won a thing, you know, they've lost all of that stolen money and more, you know. Why, why is the Crown Prosecution Service doing this when that money is sitting with gambling companies that have committed the offences that they're going to be investigated upon? So, you know, the reason I want the Gambling Commission to do these investigations before someone is charged is to get rid of the pocket completely. It's not. It's not an issue anymore unless someone has bought a car. But they have. It, just go through their bank statements for goodness sake and, and see where their gain is. You know. Um, so this is what this is the situation we have. We have these people hung out to dry in court, getting disproportionate sentence, sentences because the gambling commission are negligent. Then we have um, a pocket hearing that causes immense strain and stress on people when. The gambling commission, uh, because they're not investigating, all that money's still sitting with the gambling companies. It's it, it's scandalous, and I hope I really hope people can start to understand a little bit more about what's going on and not stay away from the topic because, you know, it is scandalous. And as I say, when I when I you know, when I say I'm the only one doing something about it, this, this that that doesn't include my community or the community of lived experience people that have gone to prison you know i'm not i'm not directing it at them because they they know what's going on and they try to speak out but we're just not listened to at the end of the day so i'm talking about the very specific people at the bottom of that report that could could do a lot more um and, and perhaps you know i'd like them to do a lot more and hey on the 7th of april i'll, I'll be giving an update as, as to whether you know, I've had some sort of impact with, with, with bringing this forward or not. If it's the latter, I guess if it's the latter, then as I say, my pressure will be offloaded to them and, and they, they can ask questions about what more they should be doing.